Hey everyone, welcome back. I want to showcase a couple of more tips and tricks in Fusion. It's a feature packed application and I think there's a lot of hidden gems. So let's just get into it. The spline tools in Fusion B spline and polygon and multipoly can create variable softness if you have a closed shape. So with the B spline selected, I'm just going to draw a shape and close it. If I right click and go polyline, make outer polyline, I can now select a point and go control command and create a variable softness just for that one. You can also right click and go outer polyline and disable the follow inner polyline. That makes the two of them completely independent but you can reconnect them by going outer polyline, follow inner polyline. And now the inner one will control the outer one, and the outer one will still be independent. The same is true for the polygon node as well. It has the same features that let you control the variable softness with an outer polyline. The B-spline is different from the polygon node in the sense that you can't control the tangent or the smoothness between the points directly but you can control them if you press the W button to control the sharpness of the point. That way you can have variable sharpness using the B-spline tool. If you want to automate a way to declutter your viewer if you have too many splines and paths visible, you can right click, go to controls and enable auto fade controls. That'll fade them off when you're not using them. And if you click the viewer, they will reappear. While selecting points, you can hit Control Option K and it'll bring up this little menu that lets you jump to the keyframes for that particular spline. Here's a two for one tip, but if you create a polygon node and set it to pen, you can now draw freehand shapes. If you want to reduce the number of points you have to create a simpler spline, you can select everything, go to polyline and then enable reduce points and turn it all the way down. Any spline infusion can be translated, transformed, and distorted using affine transformations with the B box function. Select your points and hit Shift B, and that gives you a bounding box that you can manipulate the points in various ways. For instance, you can hit the edges, and that will give it a scale. You can also do the uh, um, the edges of the box, not just the points, but the edges. If you hold control, you can do a scale transformation from the center of the box. If you do shift, you can do perspective manipulation and do something like akin to a perspective warp. The B-Box works with uh, paths in the viewer as well. So you can translate and transform the paths the way you want it using the B-Box in the same hotkeys. It also works for the uh, spline editor as well. So you can uh, manipulate it here using the same functions the box. Another way to manipulate splines will be to select the points you want to transform. And if you press and hold the T button, it'll create a pivot point where your mouse is and lets you rotate around that as a point. So for instance, if I click here and hold down T, it'll create a rotation point, a pivot around that area. And the same is true if I do around here or pick a specific point like here. The same is true if you hit X, it'll scale from that position in the X direction. So if you want to scale from the center, I can hit X, and slide left to right, and it'll scale from that point. Same with Y, so if you want to scale it from the bottom now, you can do that as well. By default, Fusion's X and Y positions are treated as a displacement, and that's why you get these curves in the viewer instead. But you can convert the data from displacement back into X, Y coordinates if you want, and you do that by right-clicking on one of the paths and going polyline, and then convert to X, Y path. And that way we get the conversion from displacements to regular X and Y coordinates here in the spline viewer. Reduce points also works in the spline viewer. So you can right click here and say, reduce points and it'll uh, trim the points down to the bare minimum. You can do onion skinning on roto shapes and spines as well. If you right click and enable onion skinning, control alt O, which is the hotkey. It's quite useful if you're trying to see how the uh, 
shape changes over time, which is especially useful if you're doing animation. Any animation in 3D Infusion creates these animated paths, and you can control them either with the spline viewer and insert keyframes here, or you can actually insert keyframes directly into the path themselves by just moving the gizmo. And you can have custom interpolation for each one of them as well, for each one of the points, but it's quite useful to be able to nudge the, uh, the animated paths in the, in the viewport directly. There's a little used feature in the splines function called Roto Assist, which can sometimes be helpful if you want to create rough shapes. The hotkey is Control R, and it basically creates these little lines that the spline's constrained to, so that you can create these shapes quite quickly without worrying about pixel accuracy. It's a bit of a hit and miss feature, so for any serious Roto work, I probably would leave it off. But nonetheless, it can be quite useful in certain cases. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys found it interesting, maybe learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next video.